Envision that you've dropped into a creepy dull cavern. Your friends and family have been attempting to work you out of this perilous thought, yet they couldn't envision the rushes it gives you. Under the ground you end up as though in another aspect, with its staggering play of light and dim tapered rocks swinging from the roof and perfectly clear water of the underground lakes. However, there's something different hanging tight for you. Here's something you don't see toward the start and that something is passing notwithstanding the conspicuous perils. For example, falling or an avalanche, you might bite the dust from freezing suffocating and even medication harming in this video. I'll recount to you the most terrifying stories that have ended up adventuring searchers some needed to pay with their lives for the craving to top their own records, some utilization their final gasp. To jot a passing note with their finger in the sand, as the result of disregarding well-being rules today, we'll figure out why you ought to never enter caves. The most serious risk during cave investigation lies in them having such tangled mazes, chasms and gorges that if anything somehow managed to happen, you most likely wouldn't be safeguarded particularly in the event that you're setting out toward resending the most profound and the longest cavern framework in Germany. As a result of its monstrous size, it's basically difficult to track down a lost speleologist in the passages. This turned out to be clear after a hunt and salvage activity that occurred in 20114. It highlighted 700 members and cost around 960,000. Then on June 7th Cavern Voyager, Johann Vester client entered the cavern with his partners. He was a long way from being an amateur. As a matter of fact, he was one individuals who found the resending burrow framework back in 1995. That is the reason the man was as great at finding his strategy for getting around the cavern as anybody might actually be there. Undertaking's objective was to track down the spot where this framework can join Joe to another 80 chem long passage comprising of around 4,000 caverns in adjoining Austria Nobody knew precisely where the section was so Jan's investigation should turn into a sensation within resending was simply shocking by and by. Going through this cavern is truly and mentally testing the wayfarers needed to move along its wet elusive stone holes fit into limited breaks loaded up with water and since a portion of the cavern entries were upward they needed to utilize their stone climbing abilities as well, during this troublesome excursion, they slipped on the disgusting stones and frequently firmly kept away from avalanches, one of which made one of the speleologists begin overreacting and almost carry the whole group to destroy in the long run, however the researchers came to. The sought-after investigated region where the cavern conjoined with another, however, the traveller's happiness was short-lived eventually. Johan got hit by the falling stone, and one of the monster rocks penetrated his cap. The spell list went oblivious and vanished under the flotsam and jetsam. He was scarcely alive, and his partners acknowledged they'd not be able to get Johan out without anyone else, and a salvage group would be probably not going to effectively go on the burdensome excursion. To save the man still the cavern travellers chose to face a challenge. One of them remained with the harmed Yon, and one more begun advancing back to request help. Just in ten hours he arrived at the cavern entrance. Immediately, the spell Olist called the Mountain Salvage Administration, and shockingly his supplication wasn't dismissed. Eleven salvage labourers concocted an arrangement accumulated. Everything. They required, and two days after Jan entered the cavern, they went to save him. This undertaking was basically unrealistic since the actual researchers had endured the cavern's limited sections and presently the salvage by a hair group needed to crush a cot for the harmed and a great deal of other fundamental things through a similar pathway. In any case, on June 11th, there was a specialist by Johan's side. He determined the man to have light horrendous mind injury, yet said there was any desire for getting him out of this trap alive. In the meantime, an ever-increasing number of individuals were joining the salvage exertion and roughly 70% of Bavaria's mountain salvage administration's gear was utilized in the procedure on June 19th 
Johan was saved and brought to an emergency clinic by an airplane the cavern. Pioneer spent around two weeks at an emergency room had a medical procedure and afterward went through restoration that went on for a couple of months after this occurrence. The cavern entrance was shut and presently just thoroughly prepared. Researchers are permitted there stringently in instances of outright need. Johan's story became unbelievable among Spiel records. He was exceptionally fortunate to have such countless individuals stretching out endeavors to save his life. A comparable circumstance occurred in 1965 in Ohio's Wildcat Cavern. Sixteen teens and three educators from Methodist youngsters home in Bury were visiting a recreation area in the Hinkley Reservation. 15-year-old Morris Batzel had previously investigated Wildcat Cavern around here, so he assembled a gathering of companions and went there, albeit the passage entrance was north of 4 and 1 slash 2 m wide. It was just a meter in level. The entry was trailed by a limited section, which extended for around 24 m. Then opening into a greater room, the youngsters crept through the passages and afterward got through an opening of about 30 km Morris, knew the whole course forwards and backwards, yet eventually he went astray and wound up in a burrow that went down unexpectedly. Morris slithered into a thin break that out of nowhere opened into a way with a 15 inclination due to this. He was presently covered nearly topsy-turvy, in totally dark haziness, the kid couldn't break out of the snare as one of his arms was stuck under. His body, his companions attempted to arrive at Morris, yet he was north of 3M profound. So the young men went to get help. One of the educators attempted to make a circle out of his belt, to then fold over the kid's legs and get them out. It didn't work the belt. Snapped 50 and Morris fell right once again into the break. Then the instructor called the fireman they wrapped a well-being rope around Morris's body. However, this likewise flopped. Then the fireman attempted to raise the kid by snaring onto his coat just for the coat to get turn at. This point, the expectation for a fast salvage was totally gone. An ever-increasing number of heroes began rushing to the site they introduced a power generator as well as brought power and radiator into the cavern as nearer to evening the temperature should hit zero C. In the meantime, the fresh insight about the occurrence spread in and out of town, and soon the booking was overwhelmed by journalists, volunteers, and the basic society who needed to help when the kid had gone 24 hours without food and water. The heroes invited the U.S. Air yeah. Force with the group of the Public Speleological Society in Washington. They found a fitting individual who was sufficiently short to get into the break, and that was Michael Ulrey, a 15-year-old Cub Scout. Since he was a kid like Morris Michael was extremely apprehensive, yet he boldly crept to casualty and tied a rope around his legs. Then Morris was at long last let out of his snare. By and by individuals haven't gained from these unnerving occurrences and comparable things have reoccurred at least a few times yet. The other experienced trackers weren't fortunate all the time. Enough to endure one more terrible story occurred in New Jersey, which is renowned for its various caverns in spring of 1982. A state police sergeant named Donald, who was an energetic spellolist chosen to take a gathering of boy troopers on a cavern investigating, experienced two of the teens were his children. Donald picked the slanted bog cave the longest in the state it arrives at, around 381 m long. This cavern is exceptional on the grounds that it's comprised of passages where you need to in a real sense creep on your tummy, the kids. Went through the limited entries easily, however, a similar undertaking represented an issue for Donald in one of the passages at a profundity of 4. 6 m, he got stuck the youngsters endured an hour attempting to get him out prior to choosing to call for help. However, the passage Donald was trapped in, at a point so all efforts to get him out were essentially irredeemable in light of the inclination the man's blood course was poor separated from, that the air in the cavern was getting colder, and at night the temperature decreased to 13 C. 
Regardless of this, Donald actually attempted to keep up the positive feelings, made jokes and requested to tell his significant other spouse he'd be home around evening time when the salvage group showed up. They, they, folded a rope over Donald's legs and begun pulling this made rocks begin tumbling from the walls. One of the stones fell on the person in question and squeezed him much more profound into the passage. With time Donald's uplifting outlook, vanished his answers turned out to be less regular and tat. Ultimately, he went oblivious because of hypothermia. In twelve hours after he'd entered the cavern, Donald radiated his last murmur and became lethargic. Then the heroes called two young ladies who were speleology devotees and had a thin form too. The sight by the by, they simply figured out how to arrive at Donald's legs after checking his heartbeat, they found there was none still on account of hypothermia. Blood is packed in the imperatively significant organs, which can debilitate the beat in the limits so the heroes didn't give. Up they chose to go to outrageous lengths, to penetrate an opening in the wall, to get to Donald yet. When they at long last got to the casualty, they understood there truly was no heartbeat. The man was dead. This excursion turned into an outright bad dream for the scouts, and Donald's family, as odd as it might sound virus, is one of the most successive reasons for death in caves. Yet it's a long way from being the only one the main thing more terrifying than cold in a cavern is its frosty underground lakes, for instance Bounce Crack Cave, situated in Yorkshire Dales. Public Park Inn The UK has north of 10 km of passages and in the vast majority of them, you'll approach your neck in cool water. That is the reason it has an authority English rating of five focuses, the most significant level of trouble, all since it's the bed of a stream called Mossdale Beck, which streams into the cavern entry and afterward vanishes where it vanishes, is one of the greatest secrets in the speleological local area. On June 24, the 1967, a gathering of ten wayfarers entered the caverns in the desire for settling the secret that Spello List partitioned into two groups, the first comprised of six extremely experienced cave travellers, while the subsequent one was comprised of basic vacationers who simply needed to examine the cavern. Inevitably, the subsequent gathering got back to the surface. However, the first gathering was mysteriously absent. What's more, it began to rain, which nobody had seen coming at this point. The water level in the cavern continued as before, and nobody was overreacting, despite the fact that they ought to have been at that point. The accomplished speleologists from the first bunch were creeping through a passage, overwhelmed with water, for the purpose of their examination. With time, however, the downpour transformed into a genuine tempest, and the water continued to flood fortunately, one of the travellers on a superficial level was walking around the cavern and saw that the entry was completely overflowed. The young lady raced to move assist, with correcting away a bit later. Heroes and volunteers showed up at the site they needed to dig a gigantic seepage trench and fabricate a dam to completely stop the waterway stream with the salvage activity in progress the speleologist attempted to escape them overflowed cave, without help from anyone else. One of them, John Ogden, found a break in the roof that could act as an air pocket, yet it was too little and his partners could not have possibly fit in there with frightfulness he understood his colleagues were suffocating. Only a couple of metres underneath him and he was unable to help them at all the water continued to rise. And in the end, the make started step by step filling laugh hysterically with water right now the heroes utilized 19 fire siphons, and the water began to at last go down yet, when the salvage crew made it into the cave. Every one of the six Spielolists were at that point dead, right up till now. The Mossdale buckling calamity stays the most ridiculously horrible throughout the entire existence of England. However, what can be more perilous than a normal cavern on the off chance that not a submerged one on September? 29. The 1984 A Speller List named Peter, joined by two companions, showed up at the STK Fontaine Caverns to do some scuba making a plunge. 
its underground lake, every one of them plummeted together, and clutched the well-being rope to try not to get lost Peter, was the most unexperienced one, and he continued to relinquish the rope too. Take, a uh, look along the edge caves, they were passing by. It bothered his companions hugely, as each time he got lost someplace they needed to follow him, to remain together ultimately. When the man lingered behind his companions again, they understood they'd lost him. After a long pursuit they gotten back to the surface to request help simultaneously. Peter was frantically searching for the manner in which back, as he was running out of oxygen, then he marvelously stumbled over an air pocket, and later he swam into some room with a little island there. The depleted Peter nodded off. After he awakened, he saw that help wasn't there. It wasn't there the next day, and the day after that, Peter was continually ravenous, and a large number of times, he didn't actually comprehend whether he was sleeping or oblivious because of yearning. The man didn't actually have the foggiest idea how. Long he'd spent in this trap trusting somebody would find this room, eventually Peter began jotting a message on the sand. With his finger in the meantime numerous heroes were going through the cavern's passages. Yet there were such a large number of entries Peter was seen as just in six. Weeks he seemed worse for wear. His bones were in a real sense noticeable through his fair skin. The heroes hurried to the man, yet it was past the point of no return Peter had starved to death, following three desolate a long time of experiencing in the sand, close to the man's body. There was a message to his significant other and mother, saying I love you yet. This isn't even the most startling tale about biting the dust in a cavern. In the years from 1958 till 2000 L.C. Shai investigated an extraordinary number of caverns around the whole European mainland, each time-picking progressively hazardous spots his bold leisure activity, crested at the excursion to the overwhelmed cave framework in Bourges and Dale, France, in April of 2005, where L.C. was wanting to accomplish something unbelievable in the Gouldet Tunari. It extends evenly for 600 m and ranges over. 9M inside and out, it turns out to be considerably more profound, yet nobody could in fact quantify exactly the way that profound it goes. So this is where Locke was wanting to top his own profundity record and jumped to very nearly 122M into the cavern Lake Elsie, took a rebreather with him, which assists jumpers with breathing submerged and two additional fuel tanks, one loaded up with oxygen, the other with trimic, while going to extraordinary profundities jumpers, as a rule utilize this combination of oxygen, helium and nitrogen. On the off chance that you balance the trimix components erroneously, you might feel a piece dazed or tired yet. Assuming you use oxygen rather than trimic, the impact will be a lot of more regrettable. LC was certain his stuff would shield him from startling circumstances. However, it ended up being the inverse, the hardware made the jumper's mass more prominent than he planned and it became more enthusiastically to go down a limited passage LC. Painstakingly pushed his fuel tanks and stuff forward, making an effort not to raise the mud so it wouldn't ruin the perceivability in the wake of stirring things up around town of 65. 5M. The man wound up in significantly greater difficulty. He saw that, for reasons unknown, the psyche-changing impact of Trimix was more grounded than normal. He probably gotten the extents wrong, his cerebrum appeared to be in some sort of haze, the jumper was surpassed by shortcoming and confusion he felt his body rapidly slip lastly, hit the base however Locke had no opportunity to celebrate beating his own record now, at a profundity of 110m scarcely ready to inhale the jumper was battling to change to the additional oxygen tank, he could barely control his developments. Due to the tipsiness-like impact, yet after a couple of endeavors, he figured out how to do it. LC was saved at this point. The impact of Trimix made his lips immobilized and the mouthpiece dropped out from between his teeth. Everything happened so quick and weak he didn't actually see when he began to breathe in. Water. Very soon it filled the jumper's aviation routes and kicked the bucket in some cases, 
when it seems like you've considered everything down to the littlest detail things, actually don't work out as expected, since cave the travel industry, and surprisingly, more so cave plunging, are profoundly risky exercises, and you never know precisely exact thing will turn out badly. Did you had at least some idea that regular caverns aren't the ones in particular that can be dangerous in 2017 a 18-year-old sibling and a 17-year-old sister were unwinding at a sandy ocean side? In Tom's Stream, New Jersey, the teens came. Up with a bizarre diversion movement, they began digging an opening in the sand. At first they did it for no reason in particular digging, with only their hands and later they began involving a frisbee. In this manner, they dug a practically 3M opening the kid felt, as wasn't it. Enough so he bounced into the well, and kept digging yet the sand held well. Just when it was wet, and the second it evaporated, the entire walls began disintegrating, and imploded falling on the kid, an incredible mass of sand, fell on his chest, hindering his breathing the kid was. Enough so he bounced into the well, and kept digging yet the sand held well, just when it was wet, and the second it evaporated, the entire walls began disintegrating and imploded falling on the kid, an incredible mass of sand fell on his chest, hindering his breathing the kid was, frenzied attempting to breathe in some measure, a touch of air yet in the end, suffocated and kicked the bucket, and what terrible cavern occurrences, ended up peopling you know right in the remarks, and for hell's sake deal with yourself, for this buy into my feed, where you'll find out about a large number. Various side interests that are more hazardous than they show up.